Though everything was coming down, although there was great trouble everywhere, the prophet Habakkuk chose to praise the Lord. And not only praise him because it was his religious duty, not only praise him because it was the right thing to do, he praised him because the Lord is worthy, because he is good. Brothers and sisters, God doesn't want to cast anyone into the lake of fire. It's not what pleases him. It's not his heart's desire to destroy people, to make them suffer. He's a good God. He's gracious. He made us with the intention that we should live with him forever. But when the prophet heard what the Lord was going to do right from the mouth of of Jesus Christ when the Lord spoke to him he heard and was afraid verse number two actually of chapter three of Habakkuk he he heard and he was afraid but then he cries out revive your work make it known in wrath Remember mercy. <clears throat> In wrath, remember mercy. Have you not earned God's wrath? Even if you're living a saved life now, remember back to when you were not saved. Remember back to when you were a sinner. You earned God's wrath. You needed to beg him for mercy. Let's not forget how much we need his mercy, brothers and sisters. Salvation from sin is a gift. God graciously is offering to cleanse people, to wash us, to purify, to refine, to scourge, to burn away the wickedness. I tell you the truth, I still have evil in me. I still have thoughts and imaginations that rise up and I don't agree with them. By the grace of God, I say no. In the name of Jesus, I cut this or that off. I believe God has allowed the fallen nature to, to, to still be there so that we can continue to see our need for his grace, his mercy, his power. Brothers and sisters, He's faithful. He also allows the devil oftentimes to speak and to perhaps even torment, just like with Paul, the thorn in the flesh. It seems to me that demons are allowed to torture us by reminding us of how sinful we were. Reminding us who we are without Jesus Christ. But God is coming. Habakkuk chapter 3 says, God is coming with great destruction. He's coming with lightning to kill. He's coming with pestilence, with fever, affliction. He's coming as the God of war. He says the people all tremble because God is displeased. He's angry. He's full of wrath. And then he says it's because of God's salvation. Do you understand that part of God's salvation 
is to destroy the wicked. How shall the righteous be saved for eternity if God does not destroy the wicked? The wicked oppressor, the evil tongue, the lying deceiver, God must destroy all of these or else his righteous people would be burdened with them. And so Habakkuk speaks of God's salvation in the midst of looking at the vision, the burden of the Lord about the destruction of the wicked. I want God to destroy the wickedness of my fallen nature, my flesh, the sinful man, the old Adam nature in me. And I want him to cause his nature to grow within me, as Peter calls it, the divine nature. I need to grow in grace. God is marching through the midst of the people with his spear, with his indignation. And this is the salvation of his people, says Habakkuk in chapter 3, verse 19, sorry, 13. It's several verses, and the whole context is this destruction that comes from God. Now, here God is speaking of destroying a particular people at a particular time in a particular place. But at the end of all things, God will destroy all peoples across all times and all places, except for those who receive his salvation by grace through faith into a willing obedience, a heartfelt surrender to God. The evil man is made good. The sinner is made a saint. The unrighteous becomes righteous. The unjust, just. The wicked becomes a shining light out of the darkness. Brothers and sisters, let us hold fast to the blood of Jesus. Let us cleanse ourselves washing ourselves in him, in the anointed. It says, you went forth for the salvation of your people, for salvation with your anointed. Jesus Christ is the anointed of God. And then it says, you struck the head from the house of the wicked. Brothers and sisters, God is coming to get to decapitate his enemies just as Satan will decapitate the saints, so God for eternity will decapitate the sinners. Saints will suffer in this life because the God of this world is against us. But sinners will suffer for eternity because the God of gods is against them. I tell you right now, if you're a sinner, God is for you. He's offering you grace. He's offering you mercy. He's offering you compassion. He wants to save you. But if you refuse, if you resist, if, if, you, if you reject, then God will be against you for all of eternity. And you shall be in suffering, in misery, in terror, never ending. This is what the prophet Habakkuk says about these visions, about what God said to him. When I heard, my body trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered my bones, and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he comes up to the people, he will invade them with his troops. The prophet was terrified. In wrath, O oh God, remember mercy. 
He hoped for mercy for himself, that he might rest in the day of trouble. That was verse 16 of Habakkuk chapter 3. The verse in wrath, remember mercy, is at the end of verse 2 of chapter 3 of Habakkuk. Habakkuk closes his prayer. This entire chapter is a song, by the way. Chapter 3 of Habakkuk is a song supposed to be sung with stringed instruments. He wrote it to the chief of musicians, just as David used to do. But this is how he closes. Such faith, even though they might lose everything, as he saw they would. He said he would rejoice in our God, in our Lord. He says, Verse 17, 18, 19. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd, in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Yahweh, Jehovah. I will rejoice in Yahshua, Jesus Christ, Hamashiach. I will rejoice in God and in his anointed, the Son of God. God from God, true God from true God. I will joy in the God of my salvation, the Yahweh, Jehovah, God, and really there it's Lord, it's Adonai, Lord, so it's, they didn't want to say the Lord, Lord, so whenever you see Lord in all capitals, big L, big O, big R, big D, it's really Yahweh or Jehovah, depending on how you pronounce it, Y, H, W, H, sort of all consonants with no vowels, and so they're, they're really not sure how to say it. We kind of make it up. I think it's sort of silly when people want to fight over how to say this name, especially when the New Covenant is written in Greek and not even in Hebrew. So why fight over Hebrew? Digression. So the, the Yahweh, the Jehovah, Lord, this great Lord, this great Master, is my strength. He will make my feet like the deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high places. To the chief musician with my stringed instruments. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, we need to praise God no matter what our circumstances. We need to come to him with thanks in the midst of trouble, trial, in the midst of temptation, in the midst of scourging, in the midst of beatings, sorrows, and whatever the Lord allows us to go through, or even whatever punishments he personally administers to us, we need to trust in him that his heart is for our salvation. We need to look to him because he is our savior. Our God is an awesome God and he wants to save, but we must be willing to be converted from sinners and the saints. We must be willing to stop living in all known sin and begin to walk in all known righteousness. We must live a new life in the new Adam, in Jesus, Jesus Christ in us, the hope for glory. Thank you for being here, by the way. My name is Joshua Gravis. Same name here on YouTube as it is on Facebook and on PayPal. J-O-S-H-U-A, Joshua, G-R-A-V-I-S, Gravis. If you want to write me an email, add my middle name, E-V-A-N-S, Evans. It's Joshua Evans Gravis at gmail.com. Joshua Evans Gravis at gmail.com. We can correspond there if you like. Facebook, I do a live video each Saturday. I make 
these teaching and preaching videos on YouTube Monday through Friday. You can also give to the ministry on PayPal if you want to, if you believe Jesus wants you to. If you'd like to talk and pray, or if you have a work project for me, I'm a realtor and I'm in construction, let me know. Doesn't matter where you live, we'll be glad to serve you. My cell phone number is 571-466-0085. 571-466-0085. You can text me, you can call me, we can talk and pray, we can talk business, whatever works for you. I truly do seek God's blessing on myself and on other people. I look to him for his salvation. Acts 3.26 says that God sent Jesus to bless us by turning us away from our sins. And I hope today that you are turned away from your sins by the Spirit of Christ, that you are turned to God, returned to God, that you have repented by grace through faith into obedience, that you are living a righteous life, holy as he is holy, that you are magnifying the Lord by living a life pleasing to him, that in the midst of his wrath, he could remember mercy with you and with me because we testify to the blood of Jesus that it is powerful and able to cleanse us and keep us from sin. Amen. I love you all in the Lord. Thank you for being here. And hopefully we'll talk again tomorrow. Have a good day with Jesus. Goodbye, everybody.